So we got our top uh, cut off. We're ready to take this plate off. A couple of ways you can do this. I don't know if you can see the top of this or not, but that's the bulk resin that was left over on the top of the lamination plate. You can take it over your sander and sand it down right to the top of your screws and then take your screws out. But this isn't going to hurt anything. I'm going to take my hammer here and get There we go. Now, that's probably not the best thing to do, but if you're in a hurry, it'll work. It won't hurt your layup, but it is better to take it to a sander. The reason why I could take a screwdriver and do that is because they weren't very, it wasn't very thick. It was just straight resin right on top of that plastic plate. That's why I was able to hit that with a hammer and a screwdriver and just tink it off of there. If it's on there real thick and you have lots of layers of nylons over the top of your lamination plate, yeah, you're going to want to take it to a grinder and grind it away so you can get to the top of your screws. And I cleaned my little bit of clay out of my screws that I had in there. And these are coming out just as easy as can be. That's the other thing too, it, knocking that off of there like that is, you can actually, these screws have only been used once. And if you keep from sanding them and screwing them up and, and marring them, those screws are perfectly fine to send back with this product. They're number 18. They're designed to fit with a standard pyramid. I still like doing this because you have that little bit of resin in that post circle. Find you a spot, put it right on the edge of your little plate, just tap it off of there. That lifted right off. So now the only edge we have to clean is where I pulled that vacuum nylon over this. It was like this, and I pulled a vacuum nylon over it and laminated. All there is is a little bit of resin with a vacuum nylon right there. And that is such a nothing deal to either sand off just like that it's gone you're down to 100 percent top of your plate just like that you got that little piece there you need to get rid of all right so we're going to get this off of our vacuum we're going to cut the top out close we're going to open up our tooling area, take it out, and then we're going to either pull the socket or chip it out, whatever it is you prefer to do. So let's get this taken apart and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we've got our lamination plate off. Went ahead and get a rough trim out. When I sand this tooling piece, I try to expose as much of it as I can because that makes it just a hundred times easier to get out. So let's go ahead and get rid of our bag here. And now we're starting to see what basalt looks like. Laminated with no pigment. Oh, I picked up something blue in my bag. Look at that. A clean lab is a good lab. So it has that sort of appearance of carbon, but it's, it's just not the same thing the way it saturates. Okay, let's get this tooling piece out. So get rid of our clay. I had someone on the phone here last year. They were saying they were having a hard time getting this plate out. And I asked him a question, not trying to be rude. And I asked him, are you sure you got all four of the screws out? <laughs> These screws right here. And they said, yes, I got all the screws out. And I had to let them know I wasn't trying to be rude because two days earlier I was trying to take one out and I totally forgot to take all the screws out. I couldn't figure out why it was in there so hard. So. I found it to be kind of a legitimate question. And 
being very careful not to drop them on the floor or in the trash can or someplace they don't need to be. There we go. Oop, almost dropped that one. Another good screw to put a little bit of lube on before you put your plate on. We didn't mention that. And I didn't do that to this one this time. And they're still coming out just nice as can be. All right. So we've got a little hole in the middle here for a screw. And I'm just using a regular screwdriver, cranking that dude in there. The screw we provide is made to go in that hole. And I run her in there a pretty good distance. And there's a lot of ways sometimes you can just yank on it and pull it out of there. But to make sure, I go ahead and take my vice grips and hook it on here. Take my hammer and just tap it out of there. And I didn't even do that good of a job cleaning around the whole tooling piece. If this would have hung any harder in there on me, I would have come back over with my uh, Troutman and I'd have sanded this back edge away more. Because if it's going to hold on you, it's going to be anywhere that it traps the face of that tooling piece, anywhere that it hooks around there. In fact, I got that screw in there far enough, I broke that thing in half and it still popped out of there being fatter than what it should have been. But either way, hooking that vice grip on there and just taking your hammer and tapping it, that thing should pop right out of there, especially if you've lubricated your O-ring like you need to. In fact, that O-ring's still in here or it fell on the floor. Yeah, it fell on the floor. That just makes all that slide out easier. All of the edges were slicked up, out it came. Real nice clean channel, real thin finished edge. It's not super thick. That's where that buildup was we were talking about by cutting it out of the way. Keeps that edge thinner right here. So when we do go to finish this and cut our little U out with our Troutman and finish these edges off, that will look really, really clean and professional when it's done. Let's see here. Right now, that's how we're looking. And when we're finished, we'll have that little indentation here to get our finger up underneath of it. And that'll look really nice and clean all the way around it. It's another reason why I went through the steps that I did by cutting the top, getting my plate opened here, and opening this up here. Now that I've still got a cast in it, I can put it in my pipe vise and work on it. If you were to chip this out or take your socket out of your uh, uh, your cast out of your socket, it's a lot harder to work on to get your tooling pieces out. And I don't care whose tooling piece it is, but this one, for example, isn't the easiest tooling piece in the world to get out. It comes out easy, but it is four-sided and has a deep edge. So you know when you laminate, you're going to have a bit of a fight on your hands getting this out. It's a lot easier to work with it if you're still on your cast and you have a way of hanging on to it. You can get your vice grip on, you can take a hammer and tap on it. You can get in there and work on that and make sure it's out of there. If it was just a socket alone, it's a lot harder to manipulate and hang on to. You can do it, you can find a way to do it. But for me, I like having my cast and everything all in one unit for right now. And now I feel like I'm ready to pull it. So here's our PVA bag on the inside. You can see, whoop, right where I glued that, up to the top of that bag, that whole thing is in there. In fact, that feels to me like I didn't do that good of a job gluing it on. I, that's probably resin right there. In fact, I know that is. That came right in, and that O-ring stopped it from going into my chamber. Perfect. And we look down inside of our socket, and that pulls right out of there just like a million bucks. Oop, there we go. How's that? So you can see how that pulled out of there, and that coyote quick doesn't stick to the lock. It just comes out nice and clean. It's all stuck on the bag. 
We have no resin down inside that lock chamber. <laughs>